Crystal here from theweatheredfox.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a spindled piece of furniture. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Today we're going to talk about the easiest and fastest way to paint spindled furniture. Now I share tutorials like this all the time on my blog and on my YouTube channel so if you like this video please make sure to subscribe and you can find so many more tutorials on my blog, theweatheredfox.com. Now, um, the first thing that you want to do before you begin is you want to protect your floor if you're working indoors. And the way that I do that is I just, you can get a piece of plastic drop cloth from the store, um, or you can lay down some newspaper whatever you have lying around your house, just make sure that the floor is protected and um, anything that is wet is not going to seep through to your floor. And the next thing that I did was I had some extra styrofoam laying around, so I actually um, propped up my piece of furniture with some styrofoam, um, that way I can get to the bottom um, of the piece without too much trouble. So um, today we're going to be working with a couple of things, you're going to need a sand or deglosser, some paper towel, lots and lots and lots of paper towel, or some rags that uh, you don't mind throwing away. You want to have on hand a little bit of sandpaper too. This is 120 grit, um, and the reason that you're going to want to use this, we're not sanding the entire piece down, but if there is um, something on there that is kind of giving you a hard time when you're cleaning the piece, so you could just sand it off really quick and it's just an easy way to get rid of that spot. You also want to be sanding down any chipped pieces if you have some chipped paint or a chipped, chipped finish. Um, so sandpaper is handy for that. Basically what you want to do is you're going to shake it up, put a little bit, bit of this on your rag. It's kind of really uh, messy so be careful when you pour it out because you could just spill it everywhere uh, which I have done before so when you are working with deglosser this will actually degloss your floor that's why you want to make sure that's protected so basically it's going to take off that glossy finish it doesn't take it completely away so if it's still glossy once you've done this step that's okay but it's going to take the gloss away enough that your paint's going to be able to adhere to your piece. So what you're going to do is you're just going to rub the deglosser once you, you have enough on your rag. This is how much I have on my rag. I don't know if you can see that. So you're just going to rub it in circular motions. And you just kind of do that all over your piece. If you have a uh, spot that's a little bit more stubborn, you can. it's basically cleaning and deglossing at the same time. Once your uh, rag gets dirty enough, you're gonna want to add more deglosser and find a clean spot on your rag so that you're not redepositing that dirt back onto your piece. So you always wanna have a clean um, rag that you're rubbing with. So you're just going to rub just like you're cleaning it down. There's no really particular fashion. And you're going to do this to the entire piece of furniture. And then we're going to go through and we're going to sand those hard to clean spots. So once you hit a spot like this one that is giving me a hard time, you're just going to take a little bit of your sandpaper and just Sand it right off. And then just keep going. Now once you have everything sanded, you're going to want to take a damp um, paper towel. Just wet it with water and you're going to want to run over the entire surface just to make sure you don't have any remaining deglosser on your piece. Okay, let's get ready for paint. Okay, be 
before we get started on spraying this chair, let's talk about equipment um, and materials. So for this job, I'm actually painting with Magnolia Home uh, trim and cabinetry paint. You can't, you can't see it because I've already, because I'm very messy. This is an acrylic base. So I've never actually used an acrylic base in my sprayer before, um, but I did try it and it worked out pretty well. It does not actually recommend that you use an air sprayer, which is what I think the Home Right spray gun is because it uses air to push the paint through. However, I wanted to try it anyway and it actually worked out pretty well. So um, I am gonna show you how to use this the sprayer with this paint, but just make sure that you use caution. And obviously you always want to read the instructions that are on the paint can. This can um, says do not thin it at all. If you have to thin it, you're only supposed to use a very, very minimal amount of water. So that's probably another reason why they didn't want you to try um, using it in a paint sprayer because typically you do need to thin it out. However, in my home right sprayer, I was able to just dump it in. I didn't have to thin it at all, and um, it came out pretty good. So I, I'm living on the edge. For this project, all I had to do was set up, you know, put all of my pieces together that come with the home right sprayer, and I dumped my um, paint into the little container here and I plugged into a electrical cord and I'm ready to go. The one thing that you do have to make sure of if you're gonna paint indoors, this was my first time, I usually do it outside, but it's really windy. So um, it worked fine. There was hardly any overspray, uh, but you do wanna make sure that you're covering kind of an area where you are going to spray because when you're painting, you wanna make sure that you're painting Oh, off of the uh, piece each time so that you're not getting kind of run down paint um, which can which can be caused by over spraying in an area so so let's say that this is my piece of furniture you're gonna start spraying here and then you're gonna continue spraying all the way to the other side and then you're going to go up or down or whatever um, and so because of that there is some overspray so I wouldn't just spray it like on your nice fancy wall. Right now I'm in my basement, which is why it's a little bit darker. Um, and I actually have the same plastic uh, drop cloth up and I just taped it to the ceiling and I kind of made myself a corner. So if you wanna spray up and down this way, uh, which, you, which you'll wanna do for the spindles, then you wanna make sure that your spray nozzle here is set vertically. If you want to spray left to right or horizontally, you want to make sure that your nozzle is set horizontally. And basically that's it. This is kind of a circle shape. Um, I don't use it that often, but sometimes it's good to use if you uh, need to get to like a hard to reach place. I feel like the cone shape has a little bit more power. So, um, and one more thing, this little doodad here, um, if you screw this in, it will give you more power. And if you screw it out, the further out it is, the less power um, you have. So if you want to start and kind of test it out, because basically what it's doing is it's it's taking uh, the trigger here and it's making it so the trigger doesn't press as far back. So um, that's going to give you less paint that's going to come out of your sprayer. So you can start there and then adjust as needed, and that way you don't have you know, a ton of extra paint coming out. One thing that I did notice um, when I was using this acrylic, which hasn't happened with any other um, paint, so it must be, it's either because of the acrylic or it's because of the self-leveling that maybe it's doing this, but it starts to build up at the tip, um, and it almost builds up really quickly and then every once in a while I'll get like a little chunk that just sprays out just a little tiny one which isn't it's really not that bad but I want to say it's probably because um, 
because it's drying a lot faster than a normal latex paint would dry. So that's just one thing to look out for. And if it if it bothers you too much, then don't use acrylic. Use latex because you you will have to water it down, but um, it works fine. Chalk paint works fine. You just have to water it down. First, I'm just going to do like a spray just to make sure that it's working. Um, I'll just spray it like on the on the uh, plastic back here, and then once I'm I'm sure that it's working well. Um, then I'm going to start spraying the chair. There may be some time when you need to adjust to get into a crack or a crevice, but for the most part you want to keep your paint sprayer parallel to your painting surface. Okay, so for the spindles, I'm going to turn it that way because I want to be painting up and down. To get a smooth, even finish, just make sure that your new paint row partially overlaps your previous paint row. After each coat is dry, you'll want to make sure to run over it very lightly with some sandpaper just to make sure you don't have any imperfections before putting on your next coat. I ended up adding three coats to this chair, but you'll want to use your discretion depending on the paint color and the type of paint you are using. In my next video, I'll be sharing how you can create a wood finish without any stripping or staining. So be sure to subscribe.